now I feel like I have to be that person to stand every time I say something really important. <laughs> I appreciate that. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Come on, I know you can do better than that. You've been playing with logos. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's truly an honor to be here. Say. I would like to first thank She's the First for having me, um, and more importantly, for creating an organization that really helps to support and celebrate girls around the world and compete in the odds, who, despite statistics, have fought to become more than their predecessors, more than what society has expected them to be, more than what society has expected any of us to be. I have a huge fan girl of She's the First for a very long time, not just because of their mission, because, but because I wish that there was a community like this when I was in high school and college. A community of people who knew what it felt like to believe for the first time that your dreams were possible. A community who knew that it was a struggle to figure out how to navigate through the constant roadblocks to find your unique path to success. I mean, for most of my childhood, I just assumed that graduating from high school was the finish line. My only reference to college was what I saw on TV. Getting there felt impossible, inexpensive. Almost as impossible as going to the moon. Just visible, but out of reach. Just 10 years ago, I couldn't see myself in this position because I didn't know anyone in my position. I knew my mom, who had her first child at the age of 15. By the time I was old enough to look in the mirror, I was one of 16 children. Yes, I said 16. <laughs> um, and I knew my father, who his highest form of education was and he is currently serving life in Virginia for murder. So with circumstances like that, sitting at the backdrop to living in a city that was overridden by gun violence, wrapped in hopelessness, where for the most part getting arrested for many young people is a right to passage. A right to passage that even my two older brothers don't make me to. So with circumstances like those, I wouldn't have believed the crystal ball if it would have told me I would have been the first in my family to graduate high school later go to college. So how did I get here? So how did I get here? And it's a question I ask myself every single day. And I wonder about how I've navigated the system of both working with traditional institutions of power, but also the various systems in which our society, or barriers our society puts into place. I knew that there was a turning point, a moment that forces you to reevaluate the situation you're in. And it made me realize that success is a mindset, not just a destination. Yes, times are hard. In fact, times will continue to still be hard. But there's always someone out there in the world who's going through worse situations than you. And I guess for me, that was the point in my life when I realized that it was only not only bearable, but it fueled me to continue to work ahead. The turning point for me was when I was 16 years old in a cramped hotel room with my mother and five younger siblings. The room smelled like cigarettes, the walls were plastered instead of painted, the furniture was dated, and the bed was borrowed. But it was a roof over our head. It was supposed to be better than being evicted, being homeless. And it was. As my mother sat in the corner feeding my younger siblings, I tried desperately to keep my baby brother blue and quiet so that he didn't wake the rest of the building. At one point, the room was spinning. I closed my eyes, and finally, I was able to breathe again. When I opened them, I stood up, placed my baby brother on the bed, looked at my mother, and walked out of the hotel room. You see, even at 16 years old, I knew that I, I, knew that I had to make myself a priority first. Before I could even contemplate or formulate a plan to save not only my family, but also my community. I knew the life that I was born into wasn't the life I wanted to live. I watched gun violence rip through the streets like hurricanes, and they say bullets have no names, but I remember a few. I remember my brother Andre, who was 20 years old when he was shot and killed in Philadelphia. I remember my cousin Kyle, who was shot and killed in Philadelphia in 2006. And I remember my nephew, Quajir, who was shot and killed in Philadelphia just two days ago. Now, I share this with you so you can understand that regardless of your circumstances, 
You are the most important person in your life. You may not be able to always choose what world you end up on, but you can choose your mode of transportation. So I encourage you to walk, run, fly, but do not deter from your destination. Keep walking, keep running, keep flying until you reach a better place. As a participant of the She's the, She's the First program, you will learn that there are better places and be given the tools to get there. When I decided to not allow other people write my version of me into history, I realized that I wanted more for myself. And it didn't matter what other people wanted or what other people expected. I didn't want it to be just another random girl from West Philadelphia who got chewed up and spit out by the rest of the world. I wanted to be the one that they whispered about and awe. The girl who stood up every time there was injustice. The girl that faced every opportunity head on and the girl that didn't allow the world to silence her. Every single day, I'm fighting to maintain that version of myself. Despite the zip code that I was born into, or the skin that I wear with honor, despite the gender that society sometimes tries to stifle, who knew that it would take me from my little corner of the world all the way to the White House, the United Nations, and as of today, to more than 23 countries where I have used my voice my lived experience to advocate for those who cannot advocate for themselves. <laughs> young people particularly, who felt like they weren't deserving. Young people who were told that their voices, their ideas did not matter. Who were shut out from opportunities because of their zip code, because of their gender, because of their race, because of their religion, or because of who they love. But that's a job for all of us to tackle. We are at a very volatile moment in our history. It's important for all of us before we leave this venue for us to recognize not only what we've been given, but also our responsibility. Every one of us are here today because someone believed that we mattered, that, we, that our potential was limitless. Someone who used their access, their network, their privilege to ensure that we, the faceless, the nameless youth, could have every opportunity to reach our full potential. The question you must ask yourself, what are you going to use, your access, your network, and your privilege to create pathways for those who also want to reach the moon? Currently, the world is faced with the largest population of young people, 1.8 billion to be exact, most of whom who are growing up in countries and communities that are grappling with nationalism ideology. Millions of girls are still forced into child marriage. Boys everywhere are forced to become child soldiers whether on the south side of Chicago or in communities in Sudan. Basic necessities like clean water, healthcare, education are just a safe place to lay their head. Things in which we take for granted are becoming even more a foreign concept for some young people. Only accessible to the chosen few, the rich and the affluent. Circumstances that actually put all of us at risk. Circumstances that put into jeopardy very progress we all need as a, as a world and for future generations. So now is not the time to hide our heads in the sand and just pray. There is work to be done. There is place, places and spaces for all of us to roll up our sleeves and do the work. And if for one moment you were thinking you're too young, that you're too poor or whatever, you are wrong. Every single movement in our history has been led by young people. Young people leading with their energy and their passion. Young people who are not bound by the party lines of our politicians or the social constraints of our elders. So I challenge you. I challenge you to stand and speak in moments of conflict. I challenge you to, to question the status quo. And I challenge you to spread love in times of hate. And lastly, none of our lives are fairy tales. But that doesn't mean we don't deserve happy endings. So I urge you to write your own story, to create your own endings, and be the author of your own success. And for only you can determine how far you go and where you go. I say, shoot for the moon and beyond.